And we'd like to welcome everybody to the 38th annual Humber Classic Invitation. Francis Xavier out of Mississauga and the Duville Panthers out of Brampton. My name is Ryan Greco taking care of your play-by-play. -play. Joined by Elias Spate on the color commentary here brought to you by North Pole Hoops. Elias, what a game we have for us starting off in the uh, first leg of both champ of a doubleheader of championship games uh, this afternoon. Yeah, so just to give everybody some context on the tournament breakdown, we've had a prep division as well as a high school division. You are now watching the high school division championship. Xavier last year making a championship run at Offsa was a finalist ended up losing to Pine Ridge and as we all know DeVille is one of those teams that's always in the mix at Offsa. Yeah, absolutely and uh, you know classic battle between Mississauga and Brampton two teams uh, that know each other extremely well play out of the exact same region uh, faced each other as you said multiple times as uh, Tyrell Vickers gets the uh, scoring started for St. Francis Xavier with a nice little floater there. The air ball that gives uh, the Tigers an opportunity to extend their lead now with Justice Salmon bringing the ball up the court. And Vickers has been one of those pieces for the, for the Tigers that's done a lot of the scoring. Both him and Salmon able to penetrate from the wing, hit the mid-range, and shoot the three to some degree as well. As you can see, a little battle down low there. Duville comes up with it, though, on the fast break. A lot of dark blue shirts around him, though, loses control. It's going to be out of bounds, and once again, Tigers ball. That was uh, number 12, Alvin Onabalu, that uh, gets the turnover there. And it's going to be a Tigers ball. Bringing it up now is going to be number three, Paolo Rivera, point guard, standing about five foot seven out of Mississauga. He's going to go right to the basket, tries to find the inside play there, up top to Salmon. Salmon looking for an option. He's going to let it fly from the three-point line. No good. Rims out. And it's going to be out of bounds and DeVille Panthers ball. Now bringing it up for the Panthers. Number 10, Rashawn Tapper running the offense. Gets it over to Anabalu. Kicks it out for three. No good. Rims off to the left. Rebound Tigers. Pressure's on. Looking for an option again. Here's Salmon. Salmon, nice find inside, but just can't get a handle on it. Panthers force a turnover. Now bringing it back up is Sylvester. This is Jakeem Sylvester, the 12th grader. Going to go up. Foul and just can't get it to finish. A little bit of frustration there as he was uh, going to the hoop. But he's still going to go to the line for two for his efforts. And Ryan, I'm curious as to how DeVille is going to use uh, Cheyenne Hack, 6'7", probably the biggest guy on the floor uh, for, for either team. Yeah, you don't see many guys his size in the high school division, but in uh, this one, he's going to be a huge factor moving forward, especially if you see him start using you know, his lower body, that strength of waist, trying to move guys out of the way, using those big long arms. Got to learn to box out first, then go after the rebound. He, if he starts doing that during this game, he's going to be a problem down low for the Tigers. Now here comes Xavier. Pass back out. Here's Rivera. Gets it over to Salmon again. Salmon looking for an option. And there's Vickers. Shot goes up. And just a little short. That was number 21, Marco Vicioso. And it, it looked a little rushed as soon as he caught it. Didn't get enough legs under it either. Yep. Coach McKenzie quickly subs him out. Could have looked for a better shot on that one. And sometimes that's what you need, just a little, you know, get the point across. you got to take better shots, smarter selections, as here's DeVille on the inside, up and under, and just can't get it to finish. As Salmon comes down with the rebound, fast break opportunity to Vickers. Vickers, nice patience there, waiting for the defender to fly by and finishes under the rim. Yeah, and, and you see him come to a jump stop before going up. He knew that there was a trail coming behind him. Very smart move and very cognitive of that's well said as Salmon now gets himself yet another rebound. A quick turnover, but he's going to get the benefit of the call there. It looks like he got bumped a little bit there by number 12, Anabalu. And this is one thing I'm noticing, uh, Ryan, in, in, still in the high school division specifically. Off of a defensive board, guys are quick to turn around and put the ball down on the floor instead of grabbing it, securing it, turning and facing, seeing who's on the wings that you could push out to in transition. A lot of them rush and end up turning over the ball. Yeah, speaking of rush, there's another rush pass, not waiting for his uh, shooter to get in place, get the footwork set, and uh, as a result, ends up in a turnover. It's uh, four, four to one here with five minutes to go in the first. 
And that's the second unforced turnover for Xavier. And here's Duville now working it around. This is gets it over into the corner. Give himself a chance. Deville trying to find something, loses the handle on it, but gets it back over. Open look. Nope. Decides to drive to the rim. Turns into a fast break opportunity and just can't finish the layup. But Vickers is still there with it. Keeps with it. He's going to reset it. And it looks like Salmon now is on the ground. Oh, it looks like he might have twisted, uh, twisted an ankle there as he's coming down. Yeah, the takeoff looked a little funky there. Looks like it's his knee. Well, he's leaving on his own power, which is always a great sign. So, and depending on where he's sitting, he might just need a few minutes, maybe stretch it out. I hate to see that when a guy is such an X factor like Salmon. You know, had a fantastic CNIT this past summer with the Monarchs. Big reason why they finished where they did in that tournament. And Mississauga as a whole, you, you know, you speak of the Monarchs and Xavier here, top of the top of the food chain at the high school level. Mississauga Monarchs representing for the city at the club level and at the NBA level. We got Nick Stauskas, Naz Long. Andrew Nicholson's no longer in the mix there. But Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks. I mean, this is, this is pound for pound. One of the leading cities in the country. Mississauga's on the up and up and we keep producing NBA talent, and there's more coming. You got Elijah Long playing at Texas this year. In my opinion, I project him to be an NBA player, if not in this year's draft, the following. Absolutely, and then, of course, there's a personal favorite of both of ours, Jalen Llewellyn, out of uh, Father Gates originally, now of, then going to Virginia Episcopal. Uh, of course, also spent some time at Orangeville Prep before now spending his first year here at Princeton in the Ivy League, no less. Now we're talking. That is my dude. Like <laughs> Jalen Llewellyn has been underrated for so long, and I know that you've been a fan of him for as long as I can remember. You know, I, you don't get that combination of skill, bounciness, shiftiness. He's, he's very Westbrook-like. He is. But he's minus all the baggage. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. He's one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet as well. Completely like soft-spoken, um, very thoughtful in any answer that he gives in an interview, very thoughtful in conversation, incredibly high IQ. But then he's an absolute savage on the court. But, you know, getting back to action here, we've got ourselves, uh, both teams really trying to just figure themselves out offensively. A lot of turnovers in the uh, backcourt here, wouldn't you say, Elias? Yeah, it's been, and they're, un they're coming unforced. It's just rush decisions. And, you know, to your point, uh, as far as the high school division is concerned, you know, you've, you've got the athletes. I mean, at this level, they, they have the athletes that could run physically with just about any prep school, uh, both of these programs. But as we're saying here, just, just the mentality of, of always trying to rush and, and, you know, hoping to always make the right decision, but rushing the, the decisions, it's, you know, uh, it usually takes about a quarter or two for these teams to settle down and really start showing what they can do on the floor. So here we are. Uh, end of the game now for Xavier. This is number four, Patrick Rivera. He's trying to get an option open. And there's Paolo Rivera. <laughs> you got a Rivera tandem working the backcourt. Now with the ball is number 23. That is Nathan Charles. Goes up as the shot clock expires. Gets another whack at it. Here's Charles one more time. Goes up. Does get the call. And he's going to go to the line for two. And if you're DeVille, you got four bodies, or three or four bodies in there. And he's getting a tip on it every time. You got to... You got to seal. You got to make sure that he's not getting a second and third chance. And yeah, Nathan Charles, 6'4, uh, listed here as a guard. Uh, you can see, though, he's not afraid to bang with the best of them under the post. Trying to get those finishes. Now, I have to say, though, Ellie's. We're here and we're, we're praising Mississauga as they are definitely a city on the come up. But I, I feel like when it comes to the checkbook, Brampton may have them beat just alone with Tristan Thompson. <laughs> Is he worthy is the question. <laughs> no, I'm, just... I'm not worried about whether he's worthy, but when that sh with that contract extension. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right, though. Um, it, it's Brampton and, and he's Mississauga. <laughs> it, it's Brampton and Mississauga. I mean, yeah. both of them are producing at such a high level, and there's more coming through the pipeline. I've seen it. I've seen it, you know, throughout the high school scene. I've seen it throughout the prep scene, and then even even on the showcase circuit while we're, you know, we're traveling across Canada. We're, we're hosting events in, in major cities, and the pipeline continues to... You know, to breed more talent. No, oh, absolutely. They're just, they seem to be scattered all over the place. You have some at St. Martin, some at Xavier, uh, some at St. Joe's. 
As uh, also uh, just coming off the floor here is uh, was uh, Jamel Puno who had a chance to play a few minutes here. Now this is a kid who's actually I've known about for a few years now. Jamel, who's now sitting on the bench, who had a few minutes just now. Uh, younger guy out of St. Joan of Arc originally. Um, <laughs> ended up having to coach against him in uh, Rop's uh, playoff game. And uh, literally just, just a kid that once once you take a quick look at him, you realize just what he's capable of doing. He was one of the few kids at his level and age that was very capable, very comfortable shooting off the dribble. Six foot four, nice and lanky, uh, high IQ player. He was six four, tallest player on his team, and he was running point. That just goes to show you, you know, the, how much the coaching staff back at St. Joan of Arc really trusted him with the basketball. Now here he is going into grade 11, uh, playing with one of the top teams, high school teams in the province, uh, maybe even nationally at this point. Uh, and just, you know, Great to see him on such a program like Xavier, just uh, still continuing to get minutes and contributing. As uh, the ball goes up, and here's a rebound. Xavier now bringing it up. 7-4 to four with 1.30 to go here in the first. As Rivera gets it over to Salmon, who's back in the game. Great to see him after that scary fall. Uh, nice block there. Give that one. Uh, that was blocked by number 23, uh, Victor uh, Aragbe Osula. And now Duville, the defense, stubborn as ever. Denying Salmon here into the basket. Can't get the kind roll. But Duville's going to get another chance at this. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Shot goes up. Rebound is to Charles. Nathan Charles comes down with it. Another turnover. But another turnover. Xavier. Yep. And then there's the quick finish. And that one's number 35, Jalen Roberts, 12th grader, standing at six foot two, getting it done. Xavier on the other end. And that foul is going to be charged to number 12, Alvin Anabalu. Now at the line. Now 7-6 with 40. 46.8 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Shot goes up. No good on the, on the free throw there. That was uh, Tyrell Vickers again on the line. Here's Duville. There's going to be a foul there. That's going to be called for a reach in on Rivera. This is going to be Victor on the uh, inbound here. He's guarded by Salmon. Working it around the perimeter. A very Tapper. stagnant offense for DeVille off that turnover. That's where that's where it's coming from. Just guys are watching on the perimeter and not allowing any offense to come about. Impressive finish there by Vickers though on the fast break with the defender all over him. Nice patience hanging in the air. Kick out. A pump fake. You kind of, if you're a coach, you kind of almost want to see him take that shot. I mean, he had the space as he was closing out. Yes, the defender was closing out, but hands were not up. Um, not coming in at a point where you feel like there was going to be any physical contact. Yep. You'd rather just see him take that shot rather than dribble into the double team. And you know what? I find that a lot of kids at this age group, they, do, they don't really practice the mid-range as much. So it's either... You're living, you're living by the three or you're finishing at the cup. Yep. Um, nice cross-court pass there, though. Give the assist to Charles, to Vickers, and now as time runs down, not going to be enough time, and Salmon falls again. But he's helped up by his opponent. Some good sportsmanship there. And now at the end of the first quarter, I mean, both teams really trying to struggling to find their offensive footing with the score 12-6. to six. And, uh, Elias, your thoughts on that first quarter? I mean, it was sloppy for both teams. A lot of turnovers, some unforced, some, you know, coming before it even gets out in transition. Um, they, they really got a lot of cleaning up to do on, on both ends here. This is not Xavier style of play, not what we saw in the first couple of rounds. It was it was very fluid ball movement in the first couple of rounds. And uh, with that, we're going to take a quick timeout before we get back to second quarter action here at the 38th annual Humber Classic High School Division Final. I'm Michaela Roche. I played for four years at the University of Minnesota for the Golden Gophers in the Big Ten Conference. I coached for three years at Kansas State University with the Wildcats. I just completed playing professionally in Greece, and I am the National Women's Basketball Scout for North Pole Hoops. Low post right. This is Roche. Quick square around move. 
Every day waking up, I need to find a way to make girls basketball better. And so that's my job to be able to help you as a player, as a student, as a student athlete, as a young woman, and just to be able to really understand the ins and outs of what it takes to be successful both in basketball, but also in life. Third angle left, underneath Rache, quick move to the left, left hand, makes it in for two. I've lived and I've done a lot of what the, some of these young girls seek to do. You know, being a coach, being a team captain when I played. I want to guide them. I want to uh, give them advice. And I'd like to welcome everybody back. This is second quarter action, 38th annual Humber Classic. This is the high school division final between Brampton's Duville Panthers and Mississauga's St. Francis Xavier Tigers. Ryan Greco on your play-by-play, -play, joined by Elias Spate on the color. And uh, like we said, a little bit of a stagnant offense to begin that first quarter. Both teams really kind of feeling each other out. Maybe uh, I can imagine both uh, coaching staffs, Elias, uh, really telling their guys to kind of slow down and really start running their offense as opposed to just throwing the ball up based off of what we've seen so far. Yep, and you know, it, it, they just gotta slow it down. I think it's, you know, it's championship game. You got, this is the most at stake and, and guys are just trying to gain some momentum and get ahead. And here's Duville on the attack. Shot goes up. Nice effort there. I'd like to maybe see the left hand finish on that one, but still good effort nonetheless. And Vickers once again is gonna get, oh, just rims out as I'm saying it. Here's Puno now, gets it over to Salmon, but once again, some poor passing results in yet another turnover in this game. Nice spin move there though. Drive to the basket, nice finds. Up and in, nope. And Puno's gonna come down with the rebound. It's it over to the corner. Here's Salmon, tries to find it inside to a teammate. One more nice pass there, but once again, the handle's being lost and neither team really able to, it feels like both teams have been eating a whole lot of buttered popcorn before this game. <laughs> Salmon now on the inbound for Xavier. Looks for an option, might run out of time here. And there's gonna be a turnover, no call, no foul. Panther ball on the baseline. I really like what we've seen so far from Paulo Rivera, really pushing it ahead. He doesn't waste a lot of time and recognizes when his wings are open. The, you know, the ball's gonna move faster than the body, so we gotta get it ahead. Yep, there's a tough shot goes up. And speaking of Rivera, Great defense there as well over a much taller defender. Just bodies him up. Here's a drive to the basket. Up, tries to switch hands, can't. Fight coming down for it, and it's gonna be Xavier Ball. As you can see, that was, uh, that was uh, Cheyenne that was coming down with that. Have ourselves a stop and play here as a Salmon goes to the line for two. And just as Salmon, I mean, this was a guy that uh, I hadn't really heard much about until the CNITs over the summer. And I mean, the introduction he was making uh, to a number of teams and a number of, uh, of coaches at the next level that were taking a look at him. I mean, he's quite the high flyer. I mean, he, those kind of high flyers that he is, you don't see too many of those in the high school division anymore. Most of the time they've already been snatched up by the prep schools and, you know, just goes to show how much talent is still available in these divisions. And he could be a track star, he could be a football star. He's choosing to play basketball, and I think that he's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, so far for Salmon, scoreless in the game. However, his comrade Tyrell Vickers already 11 points. 11 of the 13 for Xavier. And that's just getting open and running the floor, hustling. And he's earned it. Here's Puno now. He's going to get it over. Shot goes up, can't finish. Duville comes down with the rebound. They're gonna run it themselves. Gonna take it, and there's gonna be a foul there as Roberts attacked the basket. And Duville head coach uh, Zofranieri shouting some directions there on that fast break, probably hoping that maybe he'd seen Hack as he was coming into the, uh, as he was coming in on the fast break. I mean, when you get a guy that size running the floor, really all you kind of have to do, especially if he has the space, just put it up for him instead of trying to take such a tough off balance shot. No, you're right about that, right on the money. Here's Roberts now. 
second free throw. It's long, but Hack comes down, but he's going to get called with over the back on Salmon, and it's going to be Xavier Ball. You know, and that's that's one of those situations there, Elias. I think you can agree where, you know, the importance of, of boxing out, using your hips before your arms. You know, he, he gives him a little bump with his with his with his hips there. As strong as Salmon is, he's he's not as big as Hack. And then using the body, and excuse me, then using the arms prevents the, the foul call there. But here's Puno. And of course there's Puno, nice and uh, controlled, moving to the basket. One of the best uh, finishes you've seen. And uh, he's gonna take a seat now. Or nope, excuse me, no, there's gonna be a quick timeout here, here in the uh, 38th Annual Humber Classic Final High School Division. We'll be seeing here what we're doing, and uh, we'll be back in a second. Help provide opportunity through the scouting report and the showcases and the exposures. Just be able to build a relationship and get to know them and help them just really be the best young women and basketball players that they can be. I will be evaluating talent and scouting across Canada, just evaluating players' strengths, weaknesses, area for improvement, and also making a prediction and recommendations in terms of where they can take their career and what directions they could be looking at. The opportunities are endless. If girls basketball players in Canada want to excel and want to make a career out of basketball, they have every single opportunity to. It's just a matter of putting the work in, putting the consistency in, putting the discipline in, so to have this project on my lap after everything that I've lived and that I've um, kind of been through with basketball, the timing is perfect. And again, the potential and the room for growth and the room for opportunity with girls basketball and with North Pole Hoops girls basketball, the potential is untapped. I'd like to welcome everybody back. Second quarter action here, Humber Classic. High school division final between Duville and Xavier. 5.53 to go. As uh, Duville now looking to try and get themselves going offensively, still in single digits. Shot goes up there, no good. Rebound is coming down. Great, off, great defensive and offensive effort there on the rebound. That's number 23, Osula. Goes up and under, can't finish under the basket. Referees say play on, which I think is a great decision there. As all defenders going straight up into the air, hands high. Great defensive effort by the Tigers. And that was a great play altogether by Asula on that sequence. Got the got the possession back for his team, then went back door on it. Just only thing he really did wrong is could have came to a more balanced stop before going up with it. And uh, as we're saying that, Anabalu uh, draws the charging foul on Puno. And uh, the Panthers are going to get yet another shot at uh, maybe cracking the double digit mark in this game. And a very defensively minded effort so far in this contest between these two squads. Here's an attack into the basket. Kick out. Shot. Good rotation on the ball there. Just couldn't land a little bit short. And you got to live with that. Those are the type of shots that you want. You know, high percentage open ones, mid-range within, you know, it's a, it's a quality looking shot. You can't be you can't be mad at that one. No, not some at are all. Gonna go, some are not. There's the attack. Ooh, there High it was post. for him. Oh, nice shot there, though. Good patience. Show him with the ball. Give that one to Tajan Moulton. Tajan Moulton with a good finish there at the basket. And now uh, Duville down by six. Uh, Puno's going to get called. Nope. He's going to be an out of, uh, not an out of bounds, a foul there on Anabalu. He's just getting involved in every play. And we got some substitutions onto the floor is going to be number three for Xavier. That is uh, Paolo Rivera. Number 11, uh, Tyrell Vickers gets himself back into the uh, action. And number one, Justice Salmon back onto the floor for the Tigers. Now Salmon gets it inside, back out. Rivera looking to try to attack, dribbles himself into the corner. Able to get out of trouble, though, back to Salmon. Oh, nice no-look feed inside. Shot goes up. No good. And Salmon looked a little disappointed in his teammate there. That was just another you know, awkward off-balance shot. You want to you wanna limit those possessions as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, definitely uh, as a, another shot. As he was attacking the rim there, that was uh, Tapper. Ball bounces off his foot as he was attacking, and another turnover. Rivera, Salmon. Over to the corner to Charles. Rivera thinks about it. 
Nice find inside. Tries to go up and in, and one. Give that one to Tyrell Vickers. Impressive finish under the basket. Some great movement there by Xavier. And again, Paolo's earned his way some starter minutes. He doesn't start every game, but he gets starter minutes. And that type of pass is what got him there. He's probably the one that has the best vision on the team and ability to create using his handle. I could see your eyes lit up as soon as he made that pass because that was a no-look pass. He was looking at Justice Salmon as he was passing it, and you could see the perfect feed inside to Vickers led to an and one, caught the defense off guard as well. And uh, Vickers makes good. And second shot is no good. 16 to nine here. Xavier over DeVille right now. This is the high school division finals at the Humber Classic. 3.42 to go here in the second. Tapper thinks about it. Now here comes wide open look. Nothing but net. 35, Jalen Roberts making good. Fast break now to Salmon inside. Has a response right away. Nice feed there by Charles to Salmon. Give him the assist. Looked like he took some contact on there. So, you know, and that just shows his body control. Salmon's body control on his way to the rim. Taking the contact and finishing. Absolutely. Nice little floater there, though. As you can see, both teams now starting to, uh, to figure it out offensively a little bit here as Moulton... Uh, with another shot, but here's another turnover. Here comes Tapper. Eurostep decides to go for it, misses. Salmon comes down with the rebound, and he's taking a look, and he gets it over to Rivera. And if Rivera. I'm DeVille, I'm looking to get Milton involved as much as possible on the offensive end here. When you're feeding it to him at the top of the key, he's turning and facing, and he's seeing his options. Vickers loses it. Here's DeVille on the fast break, two on one. And the foul, and one. Good decision there by Roberts, taking this on the smaller defender, keeping the ball high, and finishing at the rim with the foul. An impressive run there by Duville, has them down only by two now. 18-16 for Xavier, and Duville really getting it done in transition. There's a 12th grader, Jalen Roberts. 6-2 guard, makes good on the and one. We have a one point game now. Xavier thought they were leading comfortably, but now as the closing uh, minutes of this second quarter, DeVille making a run. Finds out to Salmon. Salmon's gonna go up and gets it to drop into the game for Xavier, number 31. Now here's Duville trying to set something up. This is Roberts. Roberts directing traffic, getting it over to Sylvester. This is Greaves, Sylvester inside, back out to Roberts. Sylvester now gonna try and attack. He's gonna get called with the travel though, just one too many steps. Some great defense and patience shown by Xavier on the zone. Twenty to seventeen. Two minutes to go in this one. Salmon bringing it up. Charles to Vickers. Vickers tries to go behind the back. Just one too many white shirts over all over him though. And Vickers, you know, he's gotten away with some of those plays in previous games. Well, when you're double teamed like that and they're taking away angles, very risky move trying to put it behind your back. And almost thinks maybe he may not have seen that second defender to try a move like that. Dangerous pass, but it gets through. Here's Puno trying to drive. Yeah, gets those, it back to Salmon. I've never been a fan of those cross-court passes. Sometimes you gotta let them, you gotta let them fly though. You just gotta make sure that they, they don't hover right over the hands of the defense. Yep, as there's gonna be another out of bounds turnover here. Panthers ball. And we're up to seven turnovers for Xavier in the first half. Coach McKenzie could not be happy with what he's seen so far. He's been a, a lot better in previous games. And here we are. Inbound with Duville. It's going to be uh, Jakeem Sylvester on the uh, inbound. He's going to get it over to Roberts. Roberts now running the point. 
Sylvester back to Roberts. He's going to let it fly. Roberts with the lone three-pointer here with Duville. And rejection by the backboard there. Salmon brings it down. And uh, he was looking for Warcheck on that one. Anthony Warcheck, number 31 for the Tigers. Loses a handle on it, though. I mean, that's one thing you don't necessarily want to see if you're Coach McKenzie is, is, is the constant leaping in the air. When As soon as you leap in the air, you're, you're really limiting your options on these passes. I'm still trying to figure out where there's a fire <laughs> between these two teams because they're running around like there is one somewhere on the floor. <laughs> Sylvester now. Oh, nice no-look feed to Roberts in the corner. Roberts going to let it fly. No good. Rebound. Give that one to Patrick Rivera. He's going to run the floor now. Puts it behind the back. Kicks it over to Warcheck. Warcheck gets it over into the corner. Back to Puno. Puno's going to let it fly. No good. And it's Sylvester bringing it up after the rebound from Duville. We got shot clock off. 20 seconds remaining in the half. Xavier up by three. We'll see if uh, Duville is going to opt to uh, try and tie this one up going into the half or if they're going to Go for a two. Roberts is going to let it fly. He wants the tie. Doesn't get it. Rebound, though. Time expiring. He's going to go for it one more time. And no good. And at the half, we've got a defensive display of epic proportions at this Humber Classic High School Final. Uh, Elias, your thoughts on that first half? I mean, it, like you said, defensively, both teams played very well. Um, they're not, not allowing each other to set up in, in transition. Uh, that's one thing I noticed. Really, they're just going to have to both clean it up on the offensive end in terms of getting into the half-court set and, and really slowing things down. We saw some stagnant offenses as well uh, where guys are just, you know, in concrete on the perimeter. Um, you, you definitely want to be able to set off ball screens and, and other action away from the ball to get a little more flow. I completely agree, and uh, with that, we are going to take a uh, brief break. Uh, at halftime here, it is the St. Francis Xavier Tiger is leading 20-17 to over the Duville Panthers here at the 38th Annual Humber Classic. This is the high school division finals here only on North Pole Hoops. We'll be right back. My name's Katra Balabi Kluo, and I'm mic'd up for North Pole Hoops. Come set screen, set screen. You never realize that those people always walk? Her arms are super long. Either like step back fake, I do it all the time. Step back fake and blow by her because you're way faster than her. Yeah. Ball here, yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Pick that up, dive on it. Help side. Yeah, help side. Oh, shoot. Good job, steal that, steal that. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, be ready for the screen. Be ready for the screen. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah. Get up, get up on it. Get up. Take the ball. Take the ball. Take the ball. Yeah, ball's here. Good D, good D. Get on it, get on it. Yeah. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, strong side. Yeah, deny. Yeah, deny. Yeah, deny. Yeah, no switch. Go back, go back. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Good take, good stream, good job. Go. Still switch, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good block, good D. Good D. In here, yeah, watch screen. Back screen, squeeze, squeeze. You gotta play better D than that. Let's go. That side, that side. Come here. You're allowing yourself to get screened. You're waiting for Jada or whoever it is to come up to you and screen you. Don't wait. Fight through it automatically. I shouldn't be switching with you, because why are you guarding a girl that's 6'2", you know? Fight through the screen. Good shot, good shot, good hit. Good shot, Paris. Good shot, Paris. Good job. Get it back! Steal that, steal that, Alexis. Holy. Good block! Yeah, strong side. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. All you, Jada. Go up, go up. Oh, yay! Talk on me! Oh, don't stop dribbling. You gotta clear 
Good job, Paris! Good shot! Yeah! Good vision. Good job. Your help. Yeah, I have the ball here. Yeah, ball here. Yeah, ball here. Here we go, ladies. Hustle out, hustle out, hustle out. Ten seconds. Look, look to push. That's the main thing right now. They're so stagnant. Like, if we push the ball, guaranteed we'll score in transition every time. My name's Katra Balabi Kubo and I'm mic'd up for North Pole Hoops. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, come set screen, set screen. You never realize that those people always block? Her arms are super long. Either like step back fake, I do it all the time. Step back fake and blow by her because you're way faster than her. Yeah. Ball here, yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Pick that up, dive on it! Help side. Yeah, help side. Oh, shoot. Good job, Seal that, Seal that. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, be ready for the screen. Be ready for the screen. Yeah, ball's here. Yep. Get up, get up on it, get up. Take the ball. Take the ball. Take the ball. Yeah, ball's here. Good D, good D. Get on it, get on it. I'm Jaden Creighton, I'm mic'd up for North Pole Hoops. Just turn up. Let's get it done. Yup, yup. Yep. Hey, twist! Twist! I got you on your house side. I got you on your house side. Cleveland! 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 Go on that side. Yeah. 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 Noah, drop. Noah, Nate. Go to work. Hey, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. I'm tired of this. Let's go. Family. Let's go. Bring it in. Bring it in. Together. One, two, three together. Come on. Give me that. Ask your partner. Ask your partner, please. Can you ask him? Can you ask him? Ask him. Thank you. Three, loose. Yeah. Knock it down. Yes, sir. Hey, go to work on him. Any post. Ben, I got you. Noah, spin. Spin. Josiah. That's Bob. Go to the ball. Who? Who are you talking to? Oh. You think you're gonna win the game? All right. I have four. Wow. Damn, ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. Fly again, go by him. Go work. Hey, we got a ball. Make a run, make a run. Here you go, boy. Hedge, hedge, hedge. James, send him to the bleachers. 
Send him to the We'd like to welcome everybody back to second half action. This is the high school division final of the 38th Humber Classic Invitational. My name is Ryan Greco taking on play-by-play, -play, joined by Elias Spate taking on color commentary. Uh, Right now we have ourselves quite the game, close one, a battle of Mississauga and Brampton, battle of the region appeal. Uh, we got the Xavier Tigers taking on the Duville Panthers. Just take a look at uh, some of the stats at halftime here. We have uh, Tyrell Vickers uh, leading all scores for the Xavier Tigers with 12. And we also have Jalen Roberts with nine points for the Duville Panthers. As uh, we get uh, action underway here as Justice Salmon drives to the basket, nice finish there. Getting himself uh, back to his scoring ways. He's got seven on the day so far. And now working around, that's Tapper to Sylvester. And Robert's gonna let it fly one more time, just a little bit long. But hey, here's Tapper's coming down with the rebound. He's gonna kick it out. Works it around, Roberts gets it back one more time. Guarded by Salmon. Here's Tapper's. Tapper, pull up jumper. Wide left, Salmon with the rebound. He's gonna push it down the floor. Here's Vickers. He gets it over to Nathan Charles, who's gonna drive to the basket. Nice put on the floor there, just can't seem to finish. And Nate's been quiet in this one. Usually one of the top producers, top two or top three producers on the team. And a bad pass there though. Gives it away, here's Roberts on the fast break. Tapper back to Roberts, up and finish. Great give and go, back and forth. Two man game there on the fast break. And Tapper's got his defense to commit all the way to him before that the drop off. Yep. And we both said though, Elias, that coming into this second uh, half, we expected these teams to wake up a little bit offensively and we saw a little bit of it there. And good steal there by Hack. He's gonna run the floor now. Tries to do the step and there's gonna be a foul on Paolo over, over Hack who has literally a foot of height over him. And uh, Paolo, I mean, that's that's going to be a testament to Paolo's toughness, though, to not only stand there, kind of get caught on his back heels, but able to keep his balance and take the contact. Yeah, he doesn't really back down from any competition. And what I like about him is he's very unselfish. He's going to he's gonna be willing to take one for the team. He, he's not worried about picking up too many fouls and having to sit out. Yep, Just that, didn't want Hack to get an easy bucket there. Yep, and Hack, uh, no good on the first one. And one thing you can also appreciate, this is my first opportunity of really seeing him for a full game, that is uh, Rivera. And uh, he, uh, you know, takes the contact. You don't see any frustration in him. You don't see any, you know, he's got an edge to him, but he doesn't have an attitude, if you, if you get what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, absolutely. And there's another uh, steal there as the press is on for the Duville Panthers. Nice find on the inside there. No call. Oh, there it is. It's a good call by the referee there. You could clearly see there was some uh, contact on the arms as the shot was going up. And as a result, number 12, Alvin Anabalu, is going to go to the line for two shots. anabalu has been strong on his takes to the rim. You know, you see he's got a, a stockier frame than, than most of these guys. A, a lot of them still underdeveloped physically. And he makes good on the first. You can see Anabalu, he had his handprints all over the beginning of this game, a cause of a lot of turnovers, trying to get his guys in scoring position, just couldn't finish as he was attacking the basket. No good on the second shot there, as it's now 24 to 21 for the St. Francis Xavier Tigers. They lead by three here, as Salmon goes with a cross-court pass, and a great pass there, maybe not intended, but a great pass nonetheless, that's gonna extend the lead for the Tigers. Into the game for the Tigers is number 25, uh, Malik Totoyute, who uh, I think recorded a, an assist there with his head. <laughs> hey, an assist is an assist and a bucket is a bucket. I'll take it. <laughs> exactly. Especially in a game that's been so defensively minded. <laughs> As there's going to be uh, an inbound here, it's going to be... Um, uh, Jamel Puno on the inbound uh, gives it to Rivera who gives it to Salmon. Now Salmon in the corner to Verk. Here's Rivera. Rivera. Salmon now thinks about it. Rivera. Oh, nice find inside of Vickers. Gets fouled. Going to go to the line for two. Excellent passing play there, Elias. It really was. Something to be seen there. And Vickers, in my opinion, has you know one of the highest ceilings 
on the floor. Everything I've seen from him, just in terms of you know his body structure, uh, position, positionally, he's he's got the the skills intact. You see his body control on his way to the rim. He's able to hang, you know, absorb contact, contort his body in midair. Absolutely. Now Vickers. Makes good on the second one. 28 to 21, 519 to go here in the third quarter. Puno, pull up jumper, knocks it down. Joe Mel Puno. And that's the shot that got him on this Xavier squad transfer from St. Joan of Arc last year. Nice pass inside to Hack. Hack, nice little finish there. Give the assist to Jakeem Sylvester. Great job of finding the big man down low and drawing in the defense. Here's Puno. Gets it back to Rivera. Kicks it in the corner. Salmon, he's going to let it fly wide open. Just a little strong, but it's Puno fighting for it over Hack. But it's Hack that's going to come up with it. And he's going to get it over to Tapper. Tapper to Sylvester. Sylvester going to attack up and in. And is going to get called with a goaltending on Salmon. It already bounced off the backboard as Salmon had touched it. Excellent take to the basket by Sylvester, and we got a few substitutions on the floor. Into the game for the Tigers is number 21. Uh, that's uh, Mark Vicioso, and also into the game is number 13, Marcus Ote. Here's Rivera, over to Salmon. Rivera again. Got a diamond press in effect for the Duville Panthers. Nice find inside as Salmon tries to get it inside to Ote, but nothing happening right through the hands. Turnover, Duville ball. And despite getting the opening, the diamond press did its job, caused the turnover. Here's a, another steal there. Charles fighting for it. It's going to go off the Duville foot. Good anticipation there by Nathan Charles jumping into the passing lane. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Puno. He's going to get uh, the inbound here. Looks like we got a stack play set up. Gets it out to Rivera. Great defense though by Tapper. But does get it into Charles. Puno gets it. Nope, just knocked loose again and here comes Jalen Roberts one more time. Eurostep up and in, finish with the left. Very nice finish there by Roberts for the Panthers. You saw him switch direction, use the rim to protect, smart play. Here's Rivera. Uh, was hoping he could lead his teammate into that pass, but... Uh, it's the right idea. It was. Unfortunately, Charles just wasn't ready. And once again, we go back to this, you know, in the high school division, you see the athletes. They have the athletes. It's just that basketball sense here and there where they got to be able to be sharp enough to understand where they need to go, what angles they need to cut. Shot is good. Give that one to Rashawn Tapper. And I believe we're going to have a timeout here. Coach McKenzie wants to talk it over with his team as uh, Duville has clawed all the way back to make this a one-point game. And with that being said, we're going to take a short break. This is the Humber Classic High School Division Final. We'll be right back on North Pole Hoops. Top Flight Academy have went back to back. It's been such a phenomenal season. The fan base has been tremendous across Canada. Um, you know, we're telling our guys, listen, man, you got to be ready to play and compete. <laughs> these guys want it. I don't want to say bad blood, but competitive spirit is going to be front and center here today. We work hard, we play hard, we play for each other, and then when we come here, for venues like this, we, we go to war. Oh, Elijah Fisher! Everyone's trying to prove themselves. Everyone's like to welcome everyone back to the 38th Annual Humber Classic. This is the high school division final here at Humber College North Campus in Rexdale. We've got St. Francis Xavier of Mississauga taking on Duville of Brampton. A very close matchup here, 30 to 29, Xavier leads. 
as we have another uh, missed shot there by Puno. It's going to be a turnover. Now bringing it up for Duville is going to be uh, Rashawn Tapper driving to the basket. Up and just rims out. Rebound no good, but rebound is tapped in by number 42 to John Moulton. And Tapper's done a good job using his first step and getting to the rim. I find just a little too much double pumps. Oh, you never want to make a pass after you've left your feet like and that. We've seen plenty of that today, unfortunately. As uh, Roberts now working it around the perimeter. Tapper gets it back. Getting a little bit more courageous and adventurous as the game is worn on. A lot less fear as he's attacking the basket as we got some substitutions. Justice Salmon back into the game, number one for Xavier. And number 11, we have uh, Tyrell Vickers back into the game after a quick breather there. And they're going to need them on the floor if they want to continue this offensive output that they've been uh, putting together. And there's going to be an out-of-bounds call on Tapper as he stepped out as he was attacking the baseline there. And it's uh, Xavier Ball yet again. And this is, uh, unfortunately, both teams are going to be looking back at this film footage and just really... I guarantee you both these coaching staffs are going to be hammering on the turnovers. I mean, when the stakes are higher, you you know, the nerves come into check. As a Salmon now. Another leave your feet pass, but this one works to Charles. Vickers up, fights through, gets the foul, and one. Send him to the line. As Xavier regains the lead, 32-31. Vickers now with 19 on the day. Very impressive showing for him, Elias. Seven more than half their points for the Tigers, and he's getting it done. And it's high percentage shots that, he, that he's getting off. Most yeah. of them are, you know, within 10 feet of the rim. Absolutely. And, and you know what? That, that's what happens when you reward yourself by running the floor. Good things happen, you know. As uh, Roberts now running the floor himself. Oh, great defensive effort there by Orchek. I don't think Roberts was expecting Warcheck to get that high up, but it doesn't matter as Rashawn Tapper gets the and one. And now we're seeing all the and one starting to fall. Both of these teams seems like they've had enough practice banging bodies in that first half. Now the, the shots are starting to fall. Maybe the nerves are starting to wear off a little bit. Usually around the second half, you know, you've got a feel for your opponent and you know you, you understand their style of play a little bit more. Now everybody's got comfortable. Absolutely. And you have to imagine as well, at some point, you know, fatigue has to set in a little bit on the defensive end as uh, both of these teams have just been constant stop and go. There's a nice find inside, and Vickers with the finish. The alley-oop layup from Warcheck from half court. <laughs> what a finish that was. I, I guarantee you, if you're watching on the stream, it doesn't do it justice to Vickers' athleticism there to be able to twist in midair and finish as there's going to be yet another whistle. I believe it's going to be a, a foul is going to be on Rashawn Tapper for Duville as it's uh, Xavier Ball now on the sideline. Salmon's going to have the inbound, and I believe he's either going to inbound it to Puno or uh, Rivera, and he gives it to Rivera, who's going to run the offense here. He's guarded by Roberts. Here's Salmon, guarded by Tapper. Salmon, over to Charles. We've got a, uh, oh, good effort there, but can't finish. Oh, Rivera, nice little spin move there. The floater, kiss off the glass, counted for two. Xavier up by three. And the rebounding efforts from Xavier really coming into play here in the second half as the third quarter winds down. We got a tight one. We do as Tapper misses the layup there. Salmon with the rebound. Oh, nice little under the leg move there. Kicks it out to Charles and he makes good on the three. What a play there by Xavier. The first real offensive run we've seen of the game, Elias, and uh, forces a timeout from the Duville Panthers. 40 to 34, Coach Zoff wants to talk it over. And we'll be right back in just a moment to continue this action in the third quarter. We'll be right back on North Pole Hoops. Yet again, a 10-point advantage restored for Team Blue. Oh! That's Judy Charges throwing it down! Welcome to the NPH Live Broadcasting Experience. Allow our team of video technicians to capture your event in high definition. Streaming directly on all NPH media platforms. Up to the minute live game coverage featuring professional commentators and analysts. Tip in, no good. Two seconds to go. 
Commercial spots available to promote and market your brand, event, or product. Enjoy the ultimate way to catch the game when you can't. That man from Quebec can fly! Exposure. And we're back with third quarter action here at the 38th Annual Humber Classic High School Division Final. St. Francis Xavier just coming off a uh, fast break run there to increase their lead to six. They've had a lead for relatively most of this game as uh, Duville needing that timeout to talk things over. Now here they come on the offensive end. And I think coming into the fourth quarter, you know, Coach Zoff's got to talk about containing Vickers. He's got 22 points in this one. Xavier as a whole has 40. And it's really a matter of keeping him out of the paint, not allowing him to get second chance opportunities or finish within five feet of the basket. Absolutely. And speaking of second chance opportunities, Elias, uh, excellent job there defensively by the Tigers preventing that very thing from happening for the Panthers as uh, they were able to knock it loose and now they have the ball and uh, Duville still working that diamond press off inbounds a nice finish and once again doing exactly what you were explaining them or uh, saying that they really shouldn't be doing which is just allowing Vickers work in the inside paint here's Duville now nice back down there on Salmon he's going to get called for the foul great footwork there by number 42 to Jean Moulton who's done a very good job of backing down Salmon. One of, you know, one of the few guys on this court who can match the size and strength and athleticism of, of uh, Salmon. And you saw it right there on full display in the paint. He's gotta be a dual sport athlete. You, you look at his frame and he's, doesn't look like he, look, look at that long wingspan. He's gotta be a plus four wingspan. Probably plays a little bit of football as well. Oh, you have to, you can imagine. You could see him probably working the defensive uh, the defensive secondary wrapping up some guys that are trying to punch through some holes. <laughs> Those long arms. Very nice shooting touch as well. It's going to make it 42-36 uh, here with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Rivera nearly loses it, but referee says play on. Here's Salmon up and end with a two-handed jam. Justice Just Salmon. Showing off all the athleticism there. As soon as he saw that lane open up, he knew he was going. Here's Jalen Roberts up. Nice kiss off the glass. It wasn't as thunderous, but it still counts as two to end this quarter. And we've got ourselves a game heading into the final frame with Xavier up 44 to 38. Very good job there. And we'll be back with fourth quarter action here on North Pole Hoops. It is St. Francis Xavier 44, Duville Panthers 38. It's not a game. This is not a game. Don't waste your time. This is not for everybody. So you gotta make a decision by the end of today if this is really what you want. Hey. Okay, I'm a 5'8 Arab kid comes from a low-income family. My family was on welfare when we came up. Nobody expected us to be in the, the to be have North Pole hoops in the position that we're in. But everyone that said no saw how hard we grinded and just beat down walls. So now, if you're not going to waste your time, your parents' time, your coaches, don't waste mine either. Because I fought for everything that I've got, and if you want it bad enough, I'm telling you, fight for it. Are we all on the same page? the room someone you don't know is watching you and someone's gonna talk about you after this and you know you want them to be able to say the right thing um, and you know that'll that'll help send you in the right direction back for the fourth quarter Xavier up 44 38 on DeVille and you know someone I remember from DeVille way back AJ Lawson I saw a skinny long kid playing and I, I thought he was going to be some big time potential and he ended up being awesome and has now started off really well at South Carolina. I'm joined by his father, 
Anthony Big Dog Lawson. That's me. How you doing, sir? Well, here today to watch the new talent here and uh, definitely remember the days when AJ was on this court with Duville. And it's the start of a good thing for him. So his, his time at South Carolina has been short and we've seen such a such a magnificent transformation, first physically. You know, oh, when yeah. he came home, what did you think? I was like, I can't play punching with you no more, you know, because sometimes <laughs> when he catch me with the long right, I have to go into another room and play it off like it don't hurt. But so <laughs> now the big dog is taking punches huh? <laughs> from the little dog that hurts. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, yeah. he's really beefed up. Yes. Um, he, he looks great physically, and, and he had himself a good game last night as well. Can you talk about that? Well, coming from Tuesday night, that was his first opening game, and he played well, but his percentage wasn't the way it should be. But he realized that, and he's always been hungry when uh, things get down like that. And last night he came out on fire, doing um, all the energy and what, showing all his talent. So that's a good thing. And I'm praying and knowing that it's going to get better. Now, one thing we talked about when he was getting ready to make the college decision um, was, you know, being able to trust the coaching staff. And I think uh, Coach Frank and Chuck Martin have have done an, uh, have stuck to what they said they were going to do, and they and they're trusting him and they're allowing him to have some minutes as a combo guard. Yes, that is one thing I can say that they really have uh, fulfilled what they told us that they was going to do with AJ. We was worried about a few things about, you know, the style of game. But now, because AJ is there, he, he is a pretty fast kid, so they can't go slow if they want to. Mm -hmm. But as AJ is a combo, he's really learning the one more and more every day. And I think that that's going to help him down the line. Now, now you think about, like, just how fast everything's moving along. Just the other day, we were talking about him at DeVille. Then he moves to GTA Prep, has a great season, uh, a great senior season. It takes him to the championship game. Then shows up really well with Team Canada, and now he's at South Carolina. The next natural step is the NBA, and we talked a, lo a little bit about this before. How do you, you just deal with how fast things are moving right now? Hey, it's all a blessing. It's been really um, shocking to me, and deep down inside, I just said that, if you slip and not try to follow your dreams and work hard towards what you really like to do in your life, it can pass you by fast. So I'm looking at myself now, looking at DeVille. Remember, like three or four years ago when he used to be here, and like you said, things is moving very fast. It's to a point where I just said, well done, son. But there's still a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's always been a fan favorite, you know, and he's been... He really built a profile for himself playing in the NPA. Uh, you know, you're a parent. It's always nice to, to hear from a parent's perspective and, and for the parents that are listening right now um, on, you know, what kind of experience was it being in the NPA and seeing the, the level of competition and, and what AJ got there? Well, honestly, uh, with NPA, there's obviously a lot of exposure and there's um, definitely uh, the point where you can get your label and get your name out there. No matter what level of player you are, that's something that NPA uh, organization can do for you. So a lot of people have to realize that it's not really where you where you playing; it's how much you want it, and you will be recognized now in Canada. I would say in the past you had to be uh, Michael Jordan over 10 years ago to get recognized. Now. That's all levels of talent, and it's how far you want to take it. Yep, and, yes. and, and you know what our saying has been for the longest time. I mean, if there's talent out there, we're going to find them. And if, and if we find them and their game speaks, yes. then they're, they're going to get recognized. That's, that's a new saying that you guys brought up, and it's a true thing, game speaks. No matter what somebody uh, perceive you as, uh, think of you or say of you, if you know yourself and your game speak for you, <laughs> It, it definitely can get you out of a small closet into a, <laughs> into a bigger one. There you go. And Tyrell Vickers seems to be the guy here for Xavier. Game is 51-48. And he's got a ton of upside. We talked about it earlier. And Tyrell Vickers is number 11 in the navy blue and gold. 28 points in the game so far. And Jamel Puno going to the line.
I have to say these uh, guys' bodies is a lot different from back in the days. These young kids got great bodies, yeah, most of them. They, I don't know what they're putting in their water or in their food, but I want some of it. <laughs> For sure. I remember about 20 years ago, I used to be in that way. Looked like that. Sure it wasn't 30? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better ease up. <laughs> Six months down the line, when I come stepping in here with uh, six dots on my stomach, then you're going to be all, uh, who is that guy? <laughs> There's Rivera, Paulo Rivera, that is one of the Rivera brothers on the team, knocking down a triple, extending the lead 55 48 here in the championship game of the high school division. Mm. And again, I'm joined by Anthony Lawson, father of AJ Lawson, South Carolina Gamecock, getting ready to. Put on for Canada, one of the 133 players suiting up at the Division One level. That that is a crazy number. Oh, right that's crazy. It's crazy good though. Yes. Yeah. Yes, crazy that's another good. another yeah. broken record for Canada, and we we just continue to keep breaking that record. Hey, you guys did a lot for a lot of things, um, organizations and schools. So I, I'm well pleased. By you know, AJ being a part of NPA and uh, what's been happening with his status and uh, promoting him and, you know, exposure. So I ain't mad at you. I love you. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite the journey. And there's, you know, there's other guys like Deshaun Henry. He's, he started off really well at Bradley as well. Um, Casey Izagu started off with a little bit of a struggle, and now he's coming into his shell, had himself a double-double the other night. Um, it, it's just great to see all the guys moving on, playing at the Canadian University level and in Division One in the NCAA, and put themselves in a really good position. Yeah, you know, that NCAA is uh, it's another level. You got you know millions of fans there and different kind of uh, environment. So sometimes uh, some guys go down from the beginning; they don't feel it. But like Casey, Casey is a workhorse. And I guarantee you Casey is going to be one of those guys that in the middle of the season or even before, people are saying, wow, where did this guy come from? Yep, that's another guy. I mean, down the road, I'm projecting two, three years. I think he's got a chance to become an NBA player as well. I, 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 I truly believe it. He's a determined person. You've seen him come a long way with body-wise. And that was Rashawn Tapper on the free throws. Hack mm. with the block. Okay. Ooh, another tough finish. I like that. <laughs> and the Panthers bringing it back. Just a three-point game, 55-52. A fairly low-scoring game compared to some of the other ones we've seen that gotten into the, the 100 mark. Uh-oh. Feel it. Nope. Yeah, we saw him take off earlier, had himself a big dunk. A little bit of traffic on that one. Yeah, he's got the man body. Panthers on the inbound here to Hack. Hack, the largest player on the floor at 6'7". Again, my partner, my partner was saying earlier, you know, a, a lot of the size has disappeared. Easy flush there. A lot of the size has disappeared from the high school scene as they've kind of been plucked away and, and gone on to the prep circuit. Yeah. You have a few left, but not that many. But this is a good thing that you're doing here, having prep and high school in the same our environment. So that's a big plus for them also. Yeah, I mean, it's important for them to see the level of competition that they're going to be going up against if they choose to move up in that level. And then it's, it's continuing to show love to the traditional high school system. And, you know, they're, for the longest time, they've been the ones that have been developing. They've been yeah. so much volunteer coaches, such as uh, Coach McKenzie here and Coach Coach Zoff's been in the game since I, oh. since I can remember. Long time, long time. If he's not there, I, I, it wouldn't even look the same with Duville. Oh no, that program <laughs> that program would not be what it is, and not have the history that it does without him. Oh yeah. 
He's had some fabulous teams go to Offsa. You know, he's he's well, definitely an important piece to this puzzle. I can tell you one thing with uh, in AJ's situation. He came there and AJ was young and his mind wasn't, you know, the way it is now, of course, in our uh, 10th grade. But he trusted him and put him from a junior team on the high school team and actually uh, built his confidence, had patience. So it's always a journey that you come through. There's a lot of people along the way that gives you that uh, encouragement. No doubt. And there's Tapper knocking in a free throw. Makes it a one-point game. 57-56 for Xavier. They've been holding on. We'll take a quick break and return for the remainder of the championship game at the high school division at the Humber Classic. NPH Events. There's an opportunity to get involved at the ground level. NPH hosts elite level high school tournaments to national club team championships throughout the course of the season. Now is your chance to get involved with the fastest growing sport in Canada with the industry leaders and influencers. Get in the game today and join NPH in growing basketball in this country. NPH Scouting Service. The NPH Scouting Service is another platform for exposure with a network of over 300 coaches and scouts from some of the most recognizable brands and programs. Our scouts are constantly evaluating talent to ensure accuracy and credibility. Keep it going. Keep the intensity high. Get your feet square. Get your feet square. Take it home, write it down, grab a homie, and work on it. Work on it, master. AJ Lawson, go! He gets it to go! Wow! Check it out, Jalen. Oh my god! Top 10. Top 10, top 10. Two-way player. And we're back here, the final uh, two minutes of the uh, Humber Classic High School Final. Uh, big thank you to Anthony Lawson there for uh, joining us for uh, that fourth quarter. Just, you know, sharing a little bit of uh, information how AJ's been holding up. Uh, glad to see that uh, he's really fitting into that uh, to those uh, to that program in South Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that there was a lot of people, including myself, that thought initially that it, it wasn't going to be a good fit for him. Just considering Frank Martin's style of play over the years, uh, but they've, they've really owned up to exactly what they said they were going to do with AJ. They've packed on the muscle just enough that he can, you know, be ready for the season, and they're giving him a lot of minutes at the combo role uh, for him to develop. And I do think that AJ, in a matter of a year to two years, uh, you know, will be on the draft boards in the NBA. Yeah, well said, well said. As, uh, now taking a look at this game right now, we've got St. Francis Xavier still holding on to a one-point lead, and we've got ourselves a game here coming down the stretch, Elias. Yep, and as that happens, we got Ridley walking into the gym. Ridley will be playing in the championship game against Rise. That should be a very good matchup. They size up very well against each other. Absolutely. Justice Salmon off the backboard there. Poor shot selection as he was shooting behind the backboard on that one. Don't really know what he was thinking on that. Minute 30 to go That's here. That's going to be costly. It's too close of a game to get that kind of shot. Yeah, Duville shot no good there. That was uh, Jakeem Sylvester that uh, missed that one. And now Paolo, excuse me, uh, Rivera is going to be bringing it up now. Kicks it off to the corner to Charles. Charles, he's going to be guarded by Tapper. Gets it back to Rivera. Rivera now, he wants it slowed down. Has still 17 seconds to work with. Plenty of time to get off a shot. Rivera, still not a lot of movement around at the high post. Here's Puno. He's going to try and take on his defender. Up and under. What a finish there by Jamel Puno. That's a big bucket for St. Francis Xavier as they get the timeout for Duville up now by three. They're going to take a one-minute timeout, and so are we. We're going to be right back to find out the finale of who's taking home the high school division championship here at the Humber Classic only on North Pole Hoops. Lives change in a matter of one weekend. It's all on you. Is it 
something that I've done again? Say what? Here's Campbell, look out, one hand down. Seeing is believing. Create your very own mixtape that showcases your top highlights and skills. And strengthen your... I'd like to welcome everyone back here. We got 52 seconds remaining here in this championship game. High School Division Humber Classic. My name's Ryan Greco, joined by Elias Spate. It is the Duville Panthers trying to pull maybe a minor upset here over the St. Francis Xavier Tigers as they are now down by three. And let's get straight to the action as Jalen Roberts now is bringing the ball over to Hack. Hack's going to try and go up. The big man at 6'7 gets it back over to Roberts. Now working over off the wing. And a turnover. Here's Puno on the fast break. Going to give it over to Rivera. And here is up and in. You can count it. Number 11, Tyrell Vickers. He's been a Panther killer all afternoon. Here's Hack. He's going to get called with the travel. Too many steps. Hack doesn't like the call. Referee says too bad, unfortunately. A costly turnover for the Panthers with 27 seconds remaining. No question it was a travel on that one. And this should do it for the game. All Xavier's got to do is, oh boy, just got to hold on to it. And Vickers, they opt to score, really pad the lead there. And it looks like that they're going to bring it home now as Roberts. I don't know why you necessarily want to foul at that point with 14 seconds remaining when you already have a double, a, a two possession lead. Heck, a th I'm sorry, a three possession lead. Regardless, Jalen Roberts is going to get a chance to put some points on the board without running any clock whatsoever. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind, Elias. When they're, when they're running, these, uh, running, running these, uh, these offenses at the very end of games, you know, do you really want to give them free points with no time off the clock? No, absolutely not. And that's, that's one thing. They, you know, it's a lesson to learn for, for future games. It's still the beginning early in the season. Mm. And, I mean, it really does follow the characteristics of this game, which has been very frantic up and down the floor, constant. Uh, but with that, we're probably going to take one more final timeout here before we get to the end of this one. It is St. Francis Xavier 63, Duville Panthers 58 here on North Pole Hoops. We'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, Shogsa. Yeah, deny. Yeah, deny. Yeah, deny. Yeah, deny. yeah no switch. Go back. Go back. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, man's here. Yeah, ball's here. Good take. Good stream. Good job. Shell switch. Squeeze. 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 Good block, good D! Good D! In here, y'all, watch screen! Back screen, squeeze, squeeze! You gotta play better D than that, let's go! That side, that side. Come here. You're allowing yourself to get screened. You're waiting for Jada or whoever it is to come up to you and screen you. Don't wait, fight through it automatically. I shouldn't be switching with you, because why are you guarding a girl that's 6'2", you know? Fight through the screen. Good shot, good shot, good hit. Good shot, Paris. Good shot, Paris. Good job. Get it back! Steal that, steal that, Alexis. Holy. Good block! Yeah, strong side. Yeah, ball's here. Yeah, ball's here. All you, Jada. Go up, go up. Oh, yay! Talk on me! Oh, don't stop dribbling. You gotta clear out. Good job, Paris! Good shot! Yeah! Good vision. Good job. Let's relax here. Oh, yes! Yes! Have your help. Yeah, have the ball here. Yeah, ball here. Yeah, ball here. Here we go, ladies. Hustle out, hustle out, hustle out. 10 seconds. And we welcome everybody back here. We got 14 seconds on the clock. Xavier versus Duville. Going to be a foul there on Jalen Roberts, and the foul as he's uh, knocking loose Patrick Rivera. And what looks like it might be it, 
Xavier just really needs to hold on to the possession here, as uh, Elias was saying earlier. Here's Charles. And there's going to be a foul. And this one will be the bonus, taking him to the line. He can ice it right here if it's not already iced. Yeah, at that point, you're looking at once again a three possession game. Or, no, it would still be a two possession, but at least it would be a tie. Misses the first. Here's the second. Got hack under the basket there. Makes good on the second, though. Six point lead. They got to get up a three. Nope, they're going to drive to the basket up, and the layup is missed. And that's going to do it. Nope, there is going to be a foul with two seconds remaining. And we're going to get two more shots. And uh, it's going to be. Tyrell Vickers getting an opportunity to uh, tally on to his uh, game-high 32 points for the St. Francis Xavier Tigers, scoring literally half of their points in this game. What an impressive display for him. He's been awesome. Most of it has gotten done within you know, 10 feet of the rim. Haven't seen a lot of his outside shooting. Not sure if it exists in his game, but hopefully it's something that's developed over the course of the season. And you can't take away his hustle and heart, though, running the floor. Misses both free throws. And that's going to be it. As St. Francis Xavier, they're going to take home the high school division gold medal here at the 38th annual Humber Classic, whereas Duville, they're going to take home the silver after a very impressive tournament and showing from them. But once again, number 25 ranked in the country, St. Francis Xavier proving why they deserve the spot in the top 25 power rankings in the country after week one with another solid performance at one of the top tournaments in the province. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. We got a big game coming up on the prep division level. We got Ridley and Rise about to go at it, both contenders for an OSBA championship this year. Stay tuned. 